Greetings everyone. Today we're going to take a look at writing equations for piecewise functions. Now in the last section you were given the equation and you had to plug in a value or you were given a graph and you were given the x value and you had to find the y value. Now I'm going to give you just the graph and you have to come up with the question or write the equations. Let's jot down this first example. Write the equation for the piecewise function. Draw a quick little sketch of this graph. You may need to pause the video and make note of where our exact points are. Okay, let's start with our first line. Now we want to read these left to right. So I'm going to recommend that we start with, as what I'm going to identify as, the blue line first. Okay. Now we want to recognize that this is a linear equation. So remembering our rules of y equals mx plus b. b represents our y-intercept. m represents our slope. So our y-intercept on this blue graph occurs at 3. Our slope, if I count from that point, goes down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Therefore, my slope is negative 1 over 1, but I'm just going to write it as negative 1. And then we fill in our x. We'll come back to this, but let's take a look at our second line. Our second line, if I was to extend it or take a look at my slope, up one, excuse me, up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, it also would have, if I extended it, a y-intercept at three. But again, my slope is down to right one, down to right one, down to right one, so instead of negative 2 over 1, I'm going to leave it as negative 2. Remember, slope is rise over run. Now in the past, this is where we would leave it. But this is a piecewise function. So first, I need a y or an f of x outside of a large bracket. I need to write both equations within that bracket. They both need a comma. And now we need to state the restrictions. If I take a look at my blue function first, my blue equation, it goes all the way to what x value? It goes all the way to that 2, x equals 2. And it goes forever left of there. Therefore, x is less than 2. Am I missing anything? Don't forget that was a solid dot at 2, so it should be or equals 2. Another way you can think of it is the interval notation. It goes from negative infinity to 2 with a bracket and a parentheses. That might help you translate those restrictions. The second equation also has a restriction of 2, but the values are greater than 2. All the x values go to the right. Notice it's an open circle at 2, so it's just greater than. Another way to think of it could be an interval notation if that's helpful. There are our two equations to create our piecewise function. So some helpful tools to remember that we went over in that previous example. Writing domain for pieces of the graphs. Okay, writing that domain as 
x is greater than, x is less than, or equal to. If it helps to write it as an interval, then maybe you want to do that as well. Equations of vertical and horizontal lines, just a refresher. That vertical lines are x equals a number. And horizontal lines are y equals a number, depending on where it goes through horizontally through the y-axis. So definitely jot that down so you don't forget that rule. It's been a while since we've done those. Also, don't forget that y equals mx plus b is our equation that we often use for our lines. Okay. This equation here can represent your horizontal shift. So we'll take a look and see if that's helpful or if you're okay with just y equals mx plus b. Also, this should be most fresh in your mind, but the equation for the absolute value, you have your horizontal shift, you have your vertical shift, and you have your vertical stretch or compression. So we're still going to be seeing those absolute value equations. Let's take a look at another example. Take a moment to pause this video and do a quick sketch of this graph. Try to make note of where these exact dots occur. Let's start off with the furthest left equation. I'm going to reference this as the purple one. So for this equation, it's linear. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. First thing I need to find is that y-intercept. If I take a look, it looks like it goes down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. So from this point, if I went down 1 over 2, it would actually go through that half point. So the b value is negative 1.5. The slope was down 1 over 2, negative 1, positive 2. Down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. That's our first, our purple line. Take a look at the green line. The green line, those should be right on the coordinates, right on the intersections there. It's a little bit off. This is a horizontal line, and it goes through the y-axis at 2. Therefore, that is y equals 2. Our third line, I'm going to start with the slope because that's actually the easiest part. The slope is down 1 over 1. So it's negative 1x. If I was to extend it up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, it would go through the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So my y-intercept is 7. Now we're not including those entire graphs. So now we have to use the piecewise. So I'm going to say f of x equals, and do a big bracket, and I'm going to rewrite all three of my equations from left to right. Next, they all need a comma. And now we need to look at the restrictions. So if it's helpful, I'm going to do the interval notation. So the purple graph goes from negative infinity all the way to the x value of negative 1. Negative 1 is an open circle. The green graph goes from negative 1 to 3. They're both solid dots. And the orange graph starts at 3 with an open circle and goes all the way to infinity. Remember, these are all x values. So now if I write those as inequalities, x is less than negative 1. 
this one's a little trickier. For the second one, x is between negative 1 and 3, and it's or equals to. The last notation, x is greater than 3. That's going to be the toughest part. I think mostly because we're taking something visual and writing it as an inequality and it's not just a single number line it's a whole graph i think knowing which way the signs point is a little bit tougher so you really have to take your time okay let's take a look at this one i've already got this one color coded so let's start with the light blue function it's a v which means it's going to be an absolute value function. We know there's going to be an x inside the absolute value, and now we want to take care of the shifts. It looks like it went left one, two, three. Left three is a horizontal shift, and left means it's plus three. Then it has a vertical shift of up two, therefore, plus two goes on the outside. Now I have to determine if it's a vertical stretch or compression, meaning the slope. The slope of this V rises to run one, rise to run one. Therefore, I need a two out front. That means it's a vertical stretch. Let's take a look at our red line. Our red line is horizontal. Therefore, it's Y equals, and it goes through the Y axis at four. Our purple is a linear equation. I'm going to take care of the slope first. The slope looks like it's down three over one, down three over one, down three over one would be negative three over positive one. Now for the y-intercept, I need to go the other direction up three over one. Ooh, up three over one, up three over one. I'm way off the graph here. So let's see, currently that dot is at one, two, three, four, right? This is at three comma four. I have to go up three more, so then I'd be at seven. Up three more, I'd be at 10. Up three more, I'd be at 13. So my y-intercept is 13. We could always double check that by extending our graph by using Desmos to see if we still go through those same points of 3, 4, 4, 1, um, and 5, negative 2. All right, let's turn this into a piecewise function. I need f of x, and I have three pieces, so I need a big bracket for all three. Write them out from left to right. Now we have to determine our domain restrictions. I'm going to choose to write it in interval notation first to see if that's helpful. Again, you don't have to if you're okay without it. The V, the absolute value function, goes forever left and stops at the right value of negative two. It's a closed light blue dot, so it's included. The four or the red line didn't have any red dots, therefore it's an open interval. And it went from negative two to three. The purple line had a purple dot, which implies it's closed at the x value of three, and it goes forever right. Keep in mind, yes, it looks like it's going down, but I'm worried about the x values. It's forever going right. So this means that x is less than or equal to two, excuse me, negative two. This means that x is between negative two and three. And this means that x is greater than or equal 
to three. Again, take some time, let me know if you need help with these restrictions. Let's just do a quick recap. Most importantly, when you're writing piecewise functions, you need to include f of x or y is equal to with a big bracket. After each equation, you need to have a comma. And after each comma, you need to have the domain restrictions, the x values in which that equation occurs. Let me know if you have any additional questions. This is going to be a little bit of a tougher section, so we're going to spend some time on it. We'll see you next time.